Greetings from Toronto! <laughs> Behind me, we have the sign and a very epic Canadian Zamboni. I mean, just look at this! Guys, I'm back home! Okay, so we're standing right now in front of all of the city buildings. So this cool little spacey building, city building, ice rink right here, there's ice skating open. Right now it's a little bit cold, it's about 2 degrees Celsius, which is actually the average temperature of Toronto in this time of year. So let's go explore more and see what's out here to see. So in front of us here is the old city hall. If you're a European viewer, it's not that old because remember, Canada is really young. But what I like next to the city hall, all of these flags represent the different provinces and territories in Canada. Now, I'm way better at doing videos in the middle of nowhere or in places I've never been. And being from Canada, I've been here quite a few times. So I haven't actually been to Toronto in about 10 years. So we're just gonna go walk around the city and explore, see what's changed. And then we're also gonna go to my lover, Timothy's house. Um, he's invited me over, so you'll get to meet Timothy. And then, what, what else will we do today? We're just gonna go walk around, explore, and I guess wanderlust in its fullest. Now, I need to tell you some Canadian lore. So, long ago, whenever Canada was being settled by the French and the British, there was this company called the Hudson Bay Trading Company. And their whole mission was to go and kill the animals here and give them to posh people back in Europe. Not the greatest thing since that was how the First Nations were actually living and we were taking away their source of income and food and heating and everything else. Pretty dick move. What happened though is that the Hudson Bay Company was established and around Canada it's one of our oldest standing businesses. So we see a, blue, or a nice sign here with some examples of what happened on this sign. Let's continue walking. Oh, we can see some fancy shoes in the window. I guess the fancier you get, the less you need in the window. So in Toronto, the locals call it Toronto. You drop the second T, there's already one T, there's already enough. Now, Toronto is the fourth biggest city in North America. Next to it, New York City, Mexico City, Los Angeles, Toronto. It's massive here. Hold on. Um. We're gonna walk up the street now. There's some very energetic people awake this early in the morning. We will continue to learn about Toronto, but I want you to see what I'm seeing because we're walking into something that nowhere else in Canada has. In Toronto, we have a lot of old versus new. We have this nice old building here, and behind it are these massive skyscrapers that were built. There's a lot of noise, and I hope the camera catches that. I don't know why it's so noisy. Okay, the noise has suddenly disappeared. You guys, this city's really weird. They found the noise, you guys. There's a helicopter that just landed on the building up there. You can see its little wings flapping in the air. So it's either a very famous person or someone who needs some help. Either way, I'm glad they're getting what they need. Private helicopter ride or private doctor. One of the staple stores we have in Canada is called Roots with our logo as a beaver. So I know some of you in Europe buy this brand. And if you buy it, yeah, just, you stole it from us. So thanks for supporting the little guys. I didn't even know GameStop was around after it got reddited. That's fun. Okay, so if you're watching this, we're totally gonna just do a whole podcast on Niagara and Toronto because there's so much cool stuff here. 
Hamilton Brewery right next to a nice new tower. And you can see it's approaching the Dundas Young Square. So aptly named because it comes at the intersection of Dundas Street and Young Street. We can see all of these TVs on the top. It looks like Usher's coming to town. Cool, I don't know what the Spartans is. Maybe I should get better with media. Hey, I know what Pepsi is. At least I'm one for three in all of these advertisements. So I've been walking for quite a while right now and I've seen all sorts of parts of this town. The strange thing is there's a lot of fences like gating the entryway to stuff that would, that I'm used to seeing open across the ocean. Yeah, my walking man has changed. Let's go across the road. This is really interesting perspective. Gotta make sure I don't video the wrong car again. That's sorry on the podcast. So here in the foreground, we see some nice graffiti and then we see kind of an older building next to it. And then right behind that, we see much newer stuff. And I think that like this whole layer of stuff shows a lot on how Toronto was built and is still building. See, while a bunch of other cities in the world are depopulating, Toronto's population continues to rise. And just in terms of like anthropology and sociology, it's weird why people are all moving into the same area instead of, you know, enjoying nature. Because one thing that I find when I talk to people living in big cities like this is they love going into parks. Now the parks commonly look a lot like this. It's really the most amount of green space that you can put without taking away the rent that you would get from a residential establishment. Yeah, if someone can do a research paper on why do people live together yet want green space, that'd be cool. Let me know so I can read it and then talk about it during a vlog. This is cool. No, there's a car coming in my alley. My alley car, my alley. Yes. Okay, so we've moved out of where I was at. And now before I go show you the next thing that we're gonna go see, I think it's time to swing by my friend Timothy's house. A little bit morning, I'm a little bit cold. And I think it's time to have my, my chat with him. So let's go meet Timothy. Timothy's balls, Timothy's croissants, Timothy's muffins. My UK viewers, we have something in Canada called a London Fog. It's delicious. I know it's not London, but it's delicious. So if you come here, you should try one because it's really good. Timothy asked me over for coffee. So, pro tip, if you're coming to the house of Timothy for coffee, it's not on the menu as you can see on the board, but they have a coffee called a Double Double. Now it's like two creams, two sugars. There's like triple, triple, quad, quad, but who does that much? Usually I don't put sugar in my coffee, but for Timothy, the double double is a recommendation to do. So I'm gonna go drink my coffee and then we're gonna go explore something new. The skyline is pretty insane. So coming from Europe, we don't have a lot of these buildings because the airspace is actually not available to be built in. So like specifically in London, you can't build up high in London city because there was like some building code where you needed to be uh, shorter than St. Paul's Cathedral. And that's why in London, you see only a lot of the super tall buildings in stuff like Canary Wharf or in the financial district where the airspace isn't necessarily uh, rented or sold. Here, all of this airspace up here, just having buildings, oh, massive truck. It's a little bit uh, weird. So we are currently entering what is known as Old Town. 
Um, it doesn't look very old, so don't judge the name. The name though came from whenever this whole area of Toronto was called York. So the old town name dates back into like 1815. This is where the first part of York of Toronto was started to be set up. So a lot of the buildings that we see around here are from back then. And we're gonna go see a very cool one. So our first super cool building is this building right here. Now this was the first bank of Upper Canada. And in Niagara, we learned about Upper Canada. So all of the money was stored here. So this was founded in 1821. And it's kind of, kind of part of the Canadian history before we were even a country. Now I get to show you why we're actually walking down the street. I see it right in front of us, and I'll show you. It's this, you guys, this. Boink. This is the first post office in Canada. So, whenever Canada was first becoming a country, one of the things that it gained by establishing itself separate from the British Empire was that it got to establish its own post office, its own bank system, yada yada. So it's being able to see one of the first banks and the first post office that we had is pretty cool. And that's why we see the British flag and the Canadian flag up here. Let's go walk up the steps. Here we go. Near the Upper Canada Bank. James S. Howard was the first postmaster. We have entered a, a new part of town. The more east we go, the more the town changes as it does in many places. Let's go walk. Okay, I've got to apologize for the lack of banter. After being out of Canada for 10 years, it's really weird being back so I'm just kind of exploring this as you're exploring it. We're exploring it together and figuring out what's here and what's not. And it has changed, it's changed a lot. Yeah, changed a whole lot. There's so many new buildings. Like remember I mentioned the city is continuing to grow. So there is a need for more housing. I feel like though that there's massive need for green space. Like, I just walked through this park here because I needed something that was not concrete to see. And I haven't seen that many parks. Like where do people eat lunch? Because there's all these buildings where people work. Where do they eat lunch? Now you should probably know what do people do here? As the fourth biggest city in North America, you can guess it's a tech hub. In fact, it's the second biggest tech hub next to Silicon Valley. So a lot of companies are actually setting up tech hubs here um, because cost of living here is cheaper than it is in Silicon Valley, which means paying workers here is cheaper in Canada than in Silicon Valley. Also, thanks to the strength, I guess the weakness, the strength, whatever, of the uh, Canadian dollar right now. So there's tech, there's finance, there's industry, there's manufacturing. It's basically everything that you could think of is here in Toronto. So let's continue to go and walk down, walk down this little almost green space. So behind us, you can see that super tall pointy. That super tall pointy is the CN Tower and it's the tallest tower of its type outside of East Asia. So later today, we'll go see it. Maybe we'll go up in the tower if it gets more visibility. If there's not visibility though, because it's super just gray and cloudy today, you can't see very far and it's really expensive to go up and I don't want to waste money just to see clouds because I can do that in an airplane. I want to show you though this. This is a very cool mural. So right now we're in the middle of a playground where kids play Monday through Friday during school days. How cool would it be to get up here and just do something as a child? Be on stage. So you may be wondering, where's all the people? 
If there's over 4 million people in this city, where are they? You don't see 4 million people. Welcome to my world. I can find empty spaces even in the fourth biggest city in North America. Just look at this. Empty heart. Empty street. So now let us go through this little heart and explore this area. So as you can see, there's all sorts of things to buy. A dress that you would buy, I don't know, five or six times in your life, I guess. If you're into getting married or into white dresses, you can buy some things to put on a shelf and put things in. There's some, oh, this looks like a cool store. Oh, it's a tour store. I thought they were actually selling go-karts and I was very excited about that because I was gonna come back and just see if I could go for a test drive. There's some other little cute shops around here. Coffee shops, all sorts of shops. This is the distillery district. And what makes it unique is like many other districts, it's super artsy. So there's like a lot of little single vendors in here, no chain stores. It's the oldest Victorian area though, Victorian built architecture area in North America. So all of the buildings have mostly been reconstructed as you can see and a bunch of stuff has been rebuilt or just preserved in the late 1800s early 1900s manner now i don't think this spider is victorian maybe he was is it a spider or one of those head scratcher things you know like the not entirely certain but it's kind of cool Beer, spider. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So in the summer, and for winter market and stuff, there's shops that line both of these sides. But as you know, I am queen at finding empty streets. Oh, let's go take a look at this sculpture. Right next, this is a very blue window. That's pretty. Appreciation time! You know what we've been missing? A porta that's all beard though. Everything here is shut. Fence shut. No portas that are all beard though. Go explore. Okay. I think we'll have to go find a porta that's all beard though. Because I need to go in one of these buildings. If you happen to come shopping and you happen to like shoes, this John F. Shoe Store is highly recommended. Now, if you don't like shoes and don't like shopping, then don't go in there. But it's stuff like this. Very cool shoes. Let's see if I can get you a better photo. You hear it? See, very cool stuff. I'm back in Scotland. Yay. Okay. Oh, look at this. It goes up a little bit more. Oh, hey. There's a very old thing. Let's go look at this very old thing. A very old thing in front of us. It's a millstone with the iron still in the middle of it. Hey, it's from England. I think we should go down this street now. People that are out here keep staring at me like they've never seen a camera before. Maybe vlogging's not cool in Toronto. No, it has to be. There's four million people here. I'm certain there's some amazing videos of this city. So you know how in wherever I live, wherever I may roam, where I lay my head is home, we have lover locks. Here they have locks of love. Let's go read some messages. 
This one, ooh, this is a, not even a thruple, a quadruple. So this is for Ben, Kai, Max, and Jesse. Oh, VNO, okay, I can handle that. Tyler and Lexi. Who else do we have? Fabi and Mike. Oh, I want another thruple. Those ones are fun. Oh, Daddy loves Mia. This is cool. Look at this one, you guys. From 19, or from 1870. That's awesome. Okay, let's go look for more cool, awesome luck. So I recently watched a video on physical penetration testing and they showed how to physically penetrate a lock like that. And I'm tempted. No, no, I'll be nice. I do not want to break the love, but I'm still tempted. <laughs> Maple matchup? What? Oh, here's another cool one. Oh, this one's pretty. Look at that. Wow, that one's awesome. Get my hand out of that. There we go. Ooh, I can't get up that high. There's another cool one that I can see, but you can't. Let's go explore more. Hey, this is an escape room. Fungeon. Ooh, ooh, another pretty one. So tempted. Okay, I'm sure there's bad luck if you do something with that. So I will test it on my own roundy dial lock. And if you know of any other good tips for locks, you know, tell me. So let's go continue down this fun little pathway. Oh, a port to the Zabierto, but everyone's going into it. Maybe I don't want to do that. Oh, now this is fun. Here's a port to the Zabierto. Check this out. Oh, look how awesome this place is. You guys, this is my ideal restaurant. Table for one, bar for everyone. Hello. Toronto. Look at this. Ooh, washroom. So apparently in 1920, similar to the US, Canada also made alcohol illegal. And they ended up putting industrial stuff in alcohol so people couldn't drink it. And that happened inside this house. Now, let's go. The port is all beer though. Let's go warm up my car. Oh, that was loud. <gasps> Oh, we can see all sorts of old stuff in here. Well, this is cool. This is where all sorts of distilling happened, hence the name Distillery District. Sheet metal handbrake. So whenever they were building sheet metal, you had to pinch it somewhere. And that's what that is. Oh, our sign is over here. What is this? This is a massive drill press. Check that out. That must have drilled some pretty large holes. Like stuff for making energy like that. Ooh, donde esta el baño? El baño esta a la droga. Now, this is more my style. 
I'm walking on this path and there's all these runners. Sure, there's traffic, but it's a little bit more open and there's not so many buildings. Like in city center, it got really claustrophobic. Like it was just concrete street, concrete pavement, concrete street, concrete pavement, tram, tram, and yeah, this is nice. I'm okay with this. So I'm in this area and like over here, beyond that wall, there's the sea and these houses start at two million dollars. How can people afford that? So these guys, as you can tell, are still being built. It looks like these ones, they're starting to be moved in. They're not all populated. And the major part of the city we can see in the distance. You can see all of this area is being gentrified. And I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I think it's great that Canada is growing and that the economy of Toronto is thriving, but also like people used to live here and well, I don't know where they're living. I do hope that we're putting them up somewhere though. Um, four million people, a lot of people. One thing I also need to tell you about Toronto. So, on a happier note, it's also called the six. S -S number six, I-X. Why is it called the six? Well, back in like, I think 1998, there was six major boroughs around here, like Scarborough, York, East York, and a couple of others. And as a cost caving, cost, cost savings measure, the person in charge was like, hey, we should just unify all of these together. We'll save a bunch of money and then we'll have a mega city. Now it's very unclear if it was saving costs or if you just wanted to have the fourth biggest city in North America. Um, but yeah, that's what happened. And that's why it's called the six and also why it's so big because it's actually six different normal sized cities now operating as one, one police center, you know, one mayor, one yada yada, so now you know. So over here, we can see some islands. Now, what are these islands? Well, yes, they're islands, but they didn't used to be islands. See, it used to be this peninsula that was attached to Toronto. But then, a little while ago, a massive storm came and disrupted the little land bridge that was having it there. So now they're just islands. And there's a ferry that goes to those little islands. If you want an amazing view of the skyline, highly recommend going there. There's also beaches there. So if you come into summer, awesome beaches to go on. Uh, you can have a picnic. There's like little restaurants and stuff over there. Obviously people live there, which you can see with the, with the houses. Brrr, oopsie, houses, people live there. But it's an amazing nature escape. So if you come here and you're just like, ah, oh, I'm sick of it, uh, hop on the ferry, go across to the islands. There's also an airport on one of the islands. So if you don't want to fly into Toronto Pearson, there's a Toronto City Airport that you can fly into. Now the airport's tiny and the landing is very aggressive. So just be aware of that. But other than that, yeah, you can just like hop off the airplane, walk 10 minutes and boom. You're in downtown. It's time to eat. I found a grocery store. One thing I find fascinating about grocery stores in North America is how perfect they are. Like every row of grape has its own row. All of the mingos are organized by column. And it's, it's just very clean. Oh, 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 that's not clean. The wide range of product here also tells me we're not in Brexit anymore. Yay! Check all of this stuff out. Oh, I haven't seen these in forever. Purple carrots. What will I eat? Not the Zamboni. This is massive, massive, massive variety of meat. 
I don't even know what this is. So one thing too, if you're shopping for meat in North America, it's not, chicken's not yellow. I don't know what they do to it here, but it's not yellow like it is in Europe. It's okay, that's good chicken. Just don't be alarmed from white chicken. It's, it's different, but it doesn't taste as good as it does back in Europe, but that is fine. What to eat, what to eat. Ah, oh, drinks. Okay, so we have some flavored waters here. We have mango grapefruit, which is unique. Blackberry hibiscus, again unique. Cucumber melon, which is a choice. An orange vanilla, which sounds equally like a choice. I just want sparkling water. Which, if you're looking for sparkling water here in Canada, doesn't have it a lot. Oh, I forgot about this drink. So this brand of kombucha is the best brand. And if you would like to sponsor me kombucha, you can do that. There's also another type. So there's this kind that has the white lid. There's also a kind that has a black lid and they just let it to ferment a little bit more so there's choices of alcohol in it. And I'm looking to see if I can find that kombucha. I don't think so. So we're gonna go buy this kombucha. Okay, I'm gonna go find, buy the kombucha. I need two hands though because there's a salad bar I'm gonna get some stuff from. So, show you what I get in a bit. Okay, so I got some food and it's in this box here. So just like a normal salad bar as they serve at a lot of places. And I'm walking around the store, like make three laps around the store. And finally someone stops me and they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to find a scale to weigh this thing on so I can know how much it is. They just laugh at me and they're like, go pay. You see, back in Europe, whenever you go to a salad bar, you put the box on a scale and you weigh it and then you get a barcode after you weigh it. Here they do it for you. Oops, so what did I get? There's a really nasty rubber band on here. Okay, so I got this open. I have no idea what any of this is. I got noodles, I got meat, I got rice, I got broccoli, and mystery. Now, there were labels, but they were putting the labels out, so I got really fresh food. So I'm gonna go eat my food, and then we're gonna go explore more stuff because I still have a bunch of time before my flight today, so. Okay, so we're done eating. I rank it about four out of 10, only because of the fact that one thing I'm finding about food is that it's extremely full of sodium here, not salt, sodium. I don't know why, but I can't feel my tongue. Anyway, we are gonna go now explore to see what this very tall tower is. And I will see you, whoa, I'm walking on bricks. I will see you when we get there. As you can see, we've almost reached the pointy. Next to the pointy, we have Rogers Arena, which is where the baseball team plays. So there's this Porta that's Alberto. I'm not sure it should be Alberto, so I think we should go up it. Let's go see where this goes. entered a sign. There's some signage here. Well, this is nice and pretty. I think that we're just... Nope. Pretty certain it's the wrong puerta. But it was Alberto. And hey, that's a cool shot. Okay, we've legally reached the CN Tower. As you can see, whoa, it was very zoomy. The CN Tower sits in front of us. And you can see how tall it is compared to the other really tall buildings. I would consider these buildings like a normal height, maybe like 60 floors. This guy's 
way much taller. There's a lot of people walking over in it, so we'll see the level of excitement when we get there. Oh, hey, we're crossing the street. So one thing I feel like London does right, like all of the cities in the UK, it tells you on the floor what way to look if you're gonna cross the street, which is really useful if you're not from there. And even if you're on a one-way street, you know which way to look here. I call it reverse culture shock, but I've been looking on the floor every time I try to cross the street and I don't know which way to look. So yeah, reverse culture shock is a thing. There's some things I love about here and there's some things I uh, really miss about London. Now, one of the things I love about here is where we strategically place art. Raccoon! Appreciation time! Okay, I think we should also appreciate this live squirrel. Squirrel. Hi. Hey, buddy. Hi. How are you? I mean, I don't think I want your rabies on me, but you're pretty close. Hi. Dude, that's trash. Oh. Um, careful, don't cut your tongue. And we've reached it. I don't know what this is here, but I do know that's the Tower of the CN. Just an old radio tower. I mentioned this in Niagara, but everything here for touristy stuff seems excessively expensive. To go up in the elevator up there, it's $45 per person plus tax. So like $55 to go up there. Now, what can I do for that in London? Go ride the London Eye. Uh, go on a two-day bus tour around the city. So yeah, we're not gonna do that because I'm on a budget. And unlike I thought when I was a child, money just doesn't appear in my bank account magically. <laughs> so let's go see what else we can do around here for free. <laughs> I have people in my video, yay. So like a lot of other big cities, there's a lot of sports teams in this city. Ahead of us, we have an arena for one sports team. I think this is for hockey and basketball. And then literally right behind us, probably 200 meters away, we have the baseball arena right next to CN Tower. Now, while it may seem really close to each other, where else are you gonna stick two massive buildings that you need to play those sports? I also find it kind of cool that if you're super into sports and like both your basketball guys and your baseball men are playing the same day, you can just like walk down here, grab a couple of drinks at these nice establishments and go watch your sports teams. So yeah. Um, as you may see, I'm very tired. I've been sick for like the last two weeks and I know it's not COVID because I am very much able to smell the streets of urine and other things. So I kind of wish it was COVID for that respect. Not COVID, but I'm tired and I'm jet lagged because in my, ah, in my day, I'd be going to bed right now, not walking around a city with a camera. But hey, here we are. And in front of us is the Union Station. So whenever Canada was setting itself up, you had to get across the country. And as the second biggest country in the world, you needed a pretty big railway station to set up. So one thing I find interesting about this is that even still today, you can actually take a train all the way across Canada. It's like $10,000 at the cheapest, but you can still do that. Can you do that down south below in the US? No. Can you do that in Russia? Yes. So if you want to go spend a bunch of money, it comes through this station. Oh, 
going to get hit by a car. Um, yeah, so the Canadian Railway connected the East and the West Coasts together and it helped the trading process as well, which I don't know if that was a positive thing or a negative thing. It was just a thing that happened. So the people who were first here could continue to go and kill the beavers and other animals for the furs to send back to the bougie Europeans. So right now, I'm waiting for this very green truck to move so I can cross the street. Oh, we're filming a commercial behind us. Okay, we're gonna go behind this guy. We are going to a place that I feel like I have to go. So if I have to spend money on something, we're gonna spend money on this. Now I've been there before, but I feel like that it's my rate as a Canadian to go and just have it on video that even though I don't do sports, we've gone. So we're going to the Hockey Hall of Fame and I'm gonna go finish walking there and I will see you when I get there. Okay, so the entrance to Hockey Hall of Fame is down that escalator right there, but I'm too tired. So I'm gonna sit here on these steps right next to this bank because that doesn't look suspicious at all. Uh, take a little rest and then we'll go see if we want to go down there or not because it's $25 which isn't bad but last time I went CN Tower was $25 Hockey Hall of Fame was $5 stuff has gone up so much in price and my salary has not gone up in the same uh, rate that the prices here have doubled tripled quadrupled whatever so um gonna rest and then I will see you in a bit for more exploration Okay, we've decided to walk again, and I found this really massive tall building. This is the uh, Toronto Dominion building. And very important things happen in here. Like, Dominions! I'm not sure what that means, but that's what happens in there. No, we're in the financial district, so it's like a bunch of uh, money, money stuff. That said, if you guys want to give me money, give me money. I go to better places. Okay, so Hockey Hall of Fame didn't happen because I realized the thing I like about coffee, the, coffee, the thing I like about hockey the most, whoa, is not necessarily the sports, but it's two things, Zambonis and beer. Because whenever you have to play the hockey, you have to have beer and you have to have a Zamboni to smooth out the ice. So we're gonna go try to find at least one of those two things because my flight leaves just, I don't know, in a little bit. I should probably see what time it is. And I have to figure out where my backpack is. And then I have to figure out how to get to the airport. So I feel like all of those combined together is gonna be enough time for me to have a beer, enjoy, and then we'll see where, where the airplane takes me next. No, it's, uh, it's, it's a school week, so I have to go to school next week. But I wonder where I am. I've not been down the street yet. I have walked about 30 kilometers, I think, today already. And I have not retraced my steps once. That is how big the six is. Okay, I have to show you another reverse culture shock type thing. So I mentioned I've been walking here a lot, like a whole lot. A normal trip like this that I would take in Europe, I would see a bunch of stuff to stop war, to end war. The only thing I've seen here to give awareness about what's going on in Gaza or what's going on in the Ukraine is this tiny little sticker here, way up high on the pole. I don't understand why there's not a bigger push or awareness of what's happening across the sea because it's pretty bad. So if you're on this side of the pond, guys, it's pretty bad. So yeah, just be empathetic to those who are impacted by it. So now we are gonna go and use the revolving doors since that port is not abierto. Let's come in here. <laughs> It's down here. We 
Kiko's shop. But I have a better idea. I feel like it's a sign. I was talking to a friend last night and we were talking about Clockwork Orange. So if you're the friend that's watching this right now, it's a sign. Red rum, red rum. Okay, I found my next destination. Cheers. So I'm gonna kill some time here, play some video games on my cell phone. And yeah, time to go explore a new part. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to me of the past to sign us off because it was a much more cool location than where I'm at now. Thanks for watching my video today about Toronto. I hope you love it as much as I do. Like, subscribe, drop a comment and tell me where I should go next because I'm always looking for new places to go and explore and adventure. Ciao.